talk to you today about the idea of international volunteering. But before I go into it, I just want to check who we are and where we're from. So, could you put your hand up if you were not born in the UK? Wow. Now, could you keep your hands up? And those of you who have your hands down, could you put your hand up if your parents were not born in the UK? Wow. Thank you. And I just wanted to do that to demonstrate that there's not that many of us who are from where we are at this moment in time. And my first journey, I suppose, into international volunteering came when I decided that it was too cold, that though I was born here, this country is too cold for me, and I wanted to go somewhere hot. <laughs> and it was January, and I wanted to go somewhere hot and cheap. And I saw a holiday to the Gambia, and I thought, that's it, I'm off, I'm going to the Gambia. And um, took my family, my husband, my children, and we booked a package tour, and, and we went. It didn't occur to me, even at that time of planning this trip, that I was going for the first time in my life back to where I originated from. It just really didn't occur to me. It was just another holiday. And it wasn't until I stepped off the plane in the Gambia and I saw the standard welcome party of African dancers. And I looked these people in the eye and I said to myself, back to them, <laughs> because you can talk sometimes when you're not talking. And I said, why are you doing that? And they said, why are you with all of those white people? <laughs> in that exchange that went on between us. I had a really interesting time in the Gambia. Um, there were lots of personal um, awakenings for me. Um, and like lots of holiday makers, I took myself off and went on different tours. And one of those tours was the Roots Tour. Of course. And again, I was just a holiday maker. It didn't occur to me that when I booked the tour with my credit card, what the cost was, until I got there and I walked around and I saw us and I saw them and I thought, what am I doing being a tourist in this context? And we went to visit the school. And I had young children at the time, and if there are mothers in the audience, you'll know how much you want for your children. And um, I saw the school, and I saw the children, and they did have a great deal, as you can see. And I thought, my goodness me, that could so easily have been me and my children. And I found myself thinking, Was I lucky that my forefathers were slaves? How could you think such a thing? How could you see such grinding poverty and feel lucky that your forefathers were slaves? I felt, um, whilst I was on that news tour, um, a deep sense of gratitude and a deep desire to pay back. But, and I've switched the slide because that one upsets me. Um, and that was why I felt it is important to do something tangible about that need. But then life goes on. Um, and uh, I, 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 I was working in um, London. I was working in um, one of the most diverse boroughs in the country. 
I was appointed as the executive director for a, a, a local quality department, and my new management team met, and I found myself sat in a room as a black female, surrounded by white men who were all my assistant directors. And I thought, how did we manage to get a department in the most diverse borough in the country, where all the management team were white and male? I really must do something about this. And one of the guys was leaving. So I said to him, knowing that in the third tier down, there were a, a diverse range of people in the, in the management team below him, is there anybody who could act up when you leave, who could possibly do your job? He said, no, 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 no. There's, there's, there's nobody that could possibly be my director. Uh, so I felt I had no option but to um, appoint um, uh, somebody else. But I looked for someone who was a coach and a mentor. And then I advertised within the department for anybody whatever level of, um, in the tier, they, in the management tier they were, as long as they believed that within six months of coaching and mentoring, they could put in a credible application for an assistant director's job, they could apply. And that was the only criteria. And we had hundreds of credible applications. Young, diverse, talented people who clearly were simply waiting for their bosses to die because that was the only way <laughs> that they were going to get the opportunities that they deserved. We appointed a young woman from Zambia who, within six months of coaching and mentoring, applied for an assistant director's job in a neighbouring borough and she was off. And that was the birth of the management development programme which saw lots of talented and young diverse <coughs> women in particular um, uh, progress through the ranks. And then when I left to set up a training agency, because after all, you know, actually I started as a training agency, not an international development agency. Um, the one thing that I wasn't able to do was place people. I wasn't, there wasn't anywhere that I could say, come and be mentored here or succumbed here, because I didn't have an organisation. And then I went on another holiday. And this time I went to the Caribbean. And I said to my husband, do you know, if, if somebody asked you to do some personal care training, would you do it? He said, yeah. And um, I said, would you charge? And he said, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, why would you charge? And he said, because I want these people to succeed. And that, for me, was it. I wanted to see people succeed. And here we were in a context where there were people who needed skills, who needed people who wanted to share their ability. And back in the UK where I worked, there were people who had plenty of skills and plenty of ability and had no way of sharing that. And so that is why inspirational volunteer journeys exist. And I think what's different about us is that we are from the diaspora. I do feel um, a sense of connection um, to um, the people that we work with and the people that we work with run the organisation. So the organisation uh, is run by people from Zimbabwe and from Kenya and from the Gambia, um, from Uganda, from the Caribbean and we know what's needed because we are from there. So I just want to tell you a couple of stories about what we are doing and this is um, Zimbabwe, and this young lady is Cindy. Now Cindy um, is probably quite typical in the sense that her, uh, her parents are no longer here, they unfortunately passed away with HIV AIDS, because um, if you don't have parents, you don't have the income, you don't get to go to school. And what we have done is we work alongside a training centre that takes young people and trains them in vocational skills, practical skills, so that they can actually sell their, uh, their labour. Um, what we do is take um, people from the diaspora and others who will give these young people business skills alongside their um, vocational skills. And what we did was we sponsored a, um, we do sponsor a business planning award. So rather than making charitable donations, 
We invest in people. We say, plan a business and we'll give you the startup so, so that you can, can continue to make a living. And this young lady, Cindy, won the award. And it's a very simple idea. Um, the schools have no, very little resources and she creates resources for nursery schools and she sells them to the schools. And we look for um, small businesses that have a social impact. And that's, that's why we support young people like Cindy. This here is a, is a hunting lodge that um, a group of young people have uh, been given some land by the elders to set up a hunting lodge that is, is um, going to, not hunting as in killing, but um, uh, safari, um, uh, ecotourism. And they're going to set that up so that the proceeds from that school can pay for the uh, proceeds from that project can pay for the school fees um, for the local school. And these are some of the more happy children. The idea that I want to share is that charity doesn't always work. Charity isn't the best way, I think, to make a difference. Sharing skills is a good way to make a difference. And if any of you are thinking about doing this, then what I would ask you to do is to do it with an agency that is run by the people that it serves. And I just want to finish by, by sharing this quote with you. If you're coming to save me, you are wasting your time. But if you come in because you realise that your liberation is bound up with mine, then come, because together we can save the world. And it's this realisation that my sense of who I was as a human being was so deeply and intrinsically connected to the sense of others, others their sense of being a human, that has driven me to do what I do today. Thank you.